Mm. Okay, let's stop procrastinating and let's actually make a traffic system. But before that, you probably want to hear what my game is about. Maybe not, but you don't really have a choice. I want to make a city builder, where your choices actually impact more than a few numbers going up or down. In the last devlog, I created an unlimited tax system, where all your financial dreams can come true. Yeah, okay, objectively speaking, the numbers go up or down. But if you do it in the wrong way, bad things may happen. But today I'm going to implement a good old traffic system. A car going from A to B is sadly not that simple. Of course, as a human, it's easy to see the fastest route at a glance, but computers are just rocks retricted to thinking, and the last time I've checked, rocks are pretty bad in navigation. That's why I need to make it a little bit easier for little buddies and generate a nice path that they can follow. Of course, you could just go for each segment and continuously check if you arrived at the destination, but that would be pretty performance heavy. So instead of looking at each road segment, I narrow it down by just checking each intersection and connect them with a fancy graph. This massively reduces the search tree from dozens of segments to only a few intersections, which is nice. Now if only there would be a simple way to traverse this graph and find the goal in the most efficient way. There are dozens of different search algorithms, but there are only a few ones that would make sense for this kind of game. According to the internet, most city building games use Dystra. Dystra basically searches along the shortest path until the goal is found. This means that it will definitely find the shortest route, but it might take a while to do that. But honestly, why would I choose Dystra if an algorithm with the name Greedy Best First Search exists? Apart from the name being slightly biased, it goes with the search graph only looking at the best possible path by a certain criteria. In this case, the distance to the goal. It finishes very quickly, but also might not find the best route. In my case, it happens when multiple streets connect to the same intersections. But hear me out. You're just looking at it in the wrong way. It's not a bug, it's a feature. You know, sometimes people just prefer taking the scenic road. And as a fellow nature enthusiast, I, of course, fully support that in my game. Yeah, I'll probably implement some better variations in the future, and you will be able to unlock them through a simple research system or something like that. Now, after successfully calculating the route, I just need to offset the car to the right and let it follow the path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this works great with one car driving, but as soon as there are more cars, well, things get a bit tricky. So I implemented a very sophisticated program that simply checks if a car gets too close to another vehicle, and yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> and uh, as we can see, it works great. Now, you might already have noticed my next issue. I'm really starting to get bored by the one car I got from Google Poly. While adventuring through the deep depths of the internet, I stumbled upon the low poly car pack from Broken Vector. These are also the awesome guys that provided the tree pack I'm using. The only issue with a car is that a lot of their rotations are completely wrong. This may look fine at first, but if I tell them to drive forward, they don't go forward. <laughs> So I put them into Blender and fixed all of their rotations for each vehicle. And with the new cars, the city also looks a lot more lively. But currently, there's complete anarchy with our traffic rules. Implementing traffic lights is actually quite a bit easier than something like the right before left rule, so I wanted to do that first. At first, I did put colliders at each intersection entry, and when a car enters that collider, uh, the collider decides if it can go or not, depending on the current status of the traffic light. But then I realized that I could vastly simplify this with one easy trick. Because each vehicle constantly checks if there's a car in front of them, I can just put a simple car collider there, and the vehicles will just think that there's a stop car in front of them. And with that, the traffic system is now working great, more or less. The only problem is that cars are nearly as big as the houses. Also, I've started to dislike the procedurally generated homes quite a bit, so I've been making a few ones in Blender recently. 
This makes quite a lot of things actually easier, because every income class has their own set area. So assigning home sizes is not random as it was before. As always, this actually leads to even more problems. But my time is limited, and so is this devlogs. So see you in the next one, where I create cities full of smog. Bye!